On this episode, we'll meet two contestants who want to win real bad. Two teenagers who have a strong passion for FFA, and they won't let mutton stand in the way. Today, they'll be competing not just for blue ribbons or best of show at this year's fair, but for the bragging rights of their FFA chapter. The stakes are high, and we sure hope they don't start to feel sheepish and back down from this competition. Whoa. They'll need sheer determination to distinguish themselves from the rest of the herd and wade through some really tough grit. What's that huge book you're looking at? Hey, Caleb, check it out. It's a complete guide to raising sheep. Everything a fella like me needs to know about helping out in today's challenges is in this book. I'm really going to be able to help you out today. Really? Oh, yeah. What have you learned so far? Well, mainly I've been focusing in on the sheep herding dog breeds. Uh, I'll take care of those. It's all how you talk to them. Uh, listen to this. <clears throat> Hello there, laddie. Would you like to chase some sheep today? There's a good sport. Why are you talking like that? Caleb, that's how you talk to an English sheepdog. Or should I talk to an Irish setter? <laughs> Shannon. Now, I can't talk to the German shepherds because I don't sprechen sie Deutsch. What kind of dogs are we using today? No dogs. Just a couple of dedicated teenagers and members of the FFA. Teenagers? I don't know how to talk to teenagers. I'm over 20. How about you let me do the talk? Good plan. Maybe you've had to gather a feisty flock without the help of a canine companion. Or you've had to shear an uncooperative you all by your lonesome. Or you've had the wool pulled over your eyes by some book about sheep herding. One way or another, we've all found ourselves in a big pile of tough grit. That's where we come in. I'm Shannon Riley. And I'm Caleb Regan. Today, we're going to show you how to complete the project. But we'll also give you the tools and techniques to help you get it done right the first time. And we've rounded up a couple of great teenagers from the FFA to take part in our challenge. Let's meet our tough grit contestants. Our first contestant is 15-year-old Ann Flock, representing Labonzi High School's FFA. Ann plays volleyball, basketball, and softball, and also participates in her local 4-H. She has two brothers who really keep her on her toes. Ann Flock? Flock? Talk about a shoe in for victory. Her name is already half sheep. Our second contestant is 16-year-old Joe Gleason. Joe's representing Mission Valley High School's FFA chapter. He has three brothers and one sister. Joe also enjoys hunting, fishing, and welding, and he plays football and wrestles. Gleason? That's not much of a sheep shearing name. Maybe he should consider changing his name to Buzz Sheepington or Lambert Woolworth. Now that's a winning sheep name. Welcome to Tough Grit. We have the perfect project for you two today. Your Tough Grit challenge is... <laughs> herding and fitting sheep for a show. Herding sheep is an important chore that most would agree is best done with the help of a dog or multiple dogs. But if you're just starting out, herding on foot with a partner may be just the skill you need. And that is your first challenge today. And if you're raising your sheep for wool or to show, you will, of course, have to prep them from washing to shearing. For your second challenge, you'll each be fitting a lamb to be inspected by a local fair judge. Now, if you're nervous about today's competition, don't feel bad. We brought in some experts to help you out with these challenges. Our first expert is Hank Will, Editor-in-Chief of Grit Magazine. Hank has raised sheep for several years and currently has about 35 hair sheep, including 20 lambs. Hank is a real hand shearing expert. Just look at that beard. And our second expert is the manager from the Tractor Supply Company store in Withville, Virginia. Welcome Erica Greer. Erica knows everything you need to know about sheep, but she still refuses to try my idea of feeding metal to sheep. After all, that's how you get steel wool. Our experts will be offering their advice and helping you complete your projects today. We're focused on three criteria of accuracy, efficiency, and as always, safety. Whichever one of you does the best in those three categories will win up to a $1,000 gift card at Tractor Supply Company for your FFA chapter. You'll also get to use some cool tools and learn about the great products you use for raising your sheep. We'll be using shampoo, shears, bluing, leads, blankets, and herding tools. I know you're hankering to get started herding, but before you do, let's hear from our experts about what to expect on this challenge. Sheep herding has been around for centuries. Um, 
typically people like to do it with dogs because it makes the job a lot easier. Uh, two breeds which are typically used are Border Collies and Australian Shepherds. What makes them so great is that they are what we call headers. They actually stare the animal down, keep them in a tight flock, um, and move them as a flock. As opposed to healers, which tend to nip at the back of their heels and push the herd instead of keeping them in a tight flock. Um, and actually sheep can panic to the and to the point of dying if they're too if they're herded too aggressively. What do you want to look for when you're getting a dog for herding lambs? You know, I think the most ideal herding dog has sort of a gathering instinct. You know, it'll go out behind the, the group and bring them in. It's pretty easy to train virtually any dog how to push animals. You want to try to avoid that if you can. Uh, the best sheep dogs are those that have a natural gathering instinct which you can work with. Mm -hmm. Sheep intuitively understand what a dog wants them to do, um, much more so than people or UTVs or anything like that. Um, so basically anything else is second rate to a dog. Saying that today, we're going to herd sheep with no dogs. So what's the main thing I need to know whenever I'm herding sheep without a dog? Patience and persistence are, are going to be very valuable to you because you have to be patient and you have to keep trying because it may take more than one try. And you want to move steadily and act with clear intention when, whenever you're working sheep. It's not ideal to work them alone on foot. What you'd really rather have is one dog on your side or perhaps another person to give you a hand. Today we don't have dogs, but we'll uh, give you guys a second person in the uh, challenges. Uh, I'll give you a hand and Erica will give Joe a hand. And now it's time to start our first challenge. Each of you will have to herd a flock of sheep from the pasture into this corral. Your experts are there to give you advice, so listen to them. In other words, your experts have to be heard while you herd in order for your flock to flow. This is a time challenge, so the first contestant done will win. As always, work carefully and safely. Remember, be deliberate with your movements and maintain your patience. Good luck to you both. Ready, set, go. between the gate and here. Nope. nope. <gasps> we gotta get that gate. Oh. Those sheep are just kidding around. <laughs> oh, now they're all gonna go. Yeah, there they go. <sighs> Once three get moving, you might as well turn around and just start over. Oh, 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 there goes one. There they all go. <laughs> now this could be a long morning. Keep them going. Here we go, here we go. He's leading them in. There they go, there they go. Keep going. Taking his time up there. Like there isn't a $500 gift card in the world. <laughs> Good job, yay! Time. Well, our FFA member Joe has growled his sheep without canine companionship. Who's gonna win this woolly war? Watch for more on Tough Grit right after these messages. In the early part of the last century, the job of shepherd was one of minimal status, but immense freedom. In many respects, the shepherd was the flock leader. Today we concentrated on handling sheep by playing the role of predator and taking advantage of the flock's flight zone to get the animals to go, but there is another more shepherd-like way. It involves bottle feeding a small portion of each year's replacement lambs and or rewarding them with pellets when they approach. Even if you bottle fed or treat trained animals that are low on the pecking order, when you step into the pasture, they will recognize you as the flock boss and quite literally flock to you. So if you want to corral the flock, all you need to do is walk out to the flock's edge, make your presence known, and lead the group in. You've heard the expression, there are many ways to skin a cat. I'm here to assure you that there are also several methods to moving sheep. Most require a little in the way of whooping it up, which lowers stress levels all the way around. 
Welcome back to a very special episode of Tough Grit. Our two contestants, FFA members, are competing in our sheep raising challenge to not only win some gift cards from Tractor Supply Company, but to also win some serious bragging rights. That's right, Shannon. Let's get back to the challenge and see who turns out to be champion. Joe and Team Tractor Supply have already gone, and now it's Ann and Team Grit's turn. Woohoo! I'm getting very excited. Good luck, Ann. Ready, Ready set, go! Go get him. Watch, one of them looked like they had a knife. Perfect, perfect approach, Ann. Take it slow. Get him worked around in the corner. Take it slow. I'll close the gap. You're doing good, Ann. Perfect, perfect, Ann. Keep him moving, let's keep him moving. Take it slow. 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 Take it slow, we're doing good. Oh my goodness, look at that. Go, go, close it, go. Look at this. For the second gig, get up there and get that gray one closed. See, the difference is a lot of animals want to get away from Hank. Time. Whoa. Woohoo! Woo. Great job, here. everybody. That was bleat. Team Just grit. bleat. All right. All right, that was the first competition, Caleb. What'd you see? Joe, Erica, Team Track Supply, you guys herded your sheep in five minutes and 45 seconds. That's not a bad time for this type, mm -mm. type of work. Uh, and Team Grit, you guys finished in one minute and five seconds. That's unreal. Congratulations, you just won the first challenge. Congratulations, you won a $500 gift card from Tractor Supply Company. But Joe, you gonna come back and win this prep competition? Yes, sir. All right, that's what I wanna hear. Now, you guys are experts on sheep, so let me ask you a question. If you leave sheep out in the rain, will they shrink? All right, now we have our mini flock gathered into a pen. Next, we'll be learning a little bit about sheep breeds and some important information on shearing. Stay with us to see who might try to pull the wool over the judge's eyes and who will win due to their sheer brilliance when we return to Tough Grit. We're glad you stayed with us. It's time for our two experts, Hank and Erica, to show us the finer points about shearing a sheep. And this could be dangerous. Some of those lambs know karate, and there's nothing worse than a lamb chop. There are two main types of sheep, hair sheep and wool sheep. Wool sheep, of course, have to be shorn yearly. So if you're more interested in providing healthy, affordable meat for your family and want to spend less time shearing in the spring, you may want to go with one of the hair breed sheep, such as a Katahdin or a Dorper. And if you're interested in fiber, you want to choose from any number of wool breeds, and you can make your choices based on the quality or other characteristics of the fiber that they produce. And if you learn how to shear them yourself, you can add significantly to your bottom line. Becoming a competent shearer takes time and practice. The novice can take two hours to do what a professional could do in a couple minutes. So I could make money by shearing other people's sheep for Yeah, them? you sure could. And your neighbors may very well pay you to come and shear part of their flock. And when you're managing a commercial flock, you might want to shear all the animals maybe in early spring. You'd like to have a little bit of that fleece grow back before the hot summertime comes because actually the, the wool will help insulate them from the heat as well as from the cold. If you're uh, shearing or you're raising animals for show, uh, you'll want to time all of that work based on what the show schedule is. Typically, machine shears are used today to shear sheep. You may have a few small operations that do use the hand shears, but machine shears are basically a little bit better. They have a guard which acts to protect the skin of the animal. And regardless of whether you're using a machine shear or the hand shears, have a bottle of disinfectant close by just in case you do cut the sheep. So what do we gotta do for this challenge? You know, that's a really good question with a pretty complicated answer. So to help us out today, we brought in Rocky Swearingen. Rocky, welcome. Rocky's a sheep breeder, a, a judge, a show judge, and a professional fitter. Come on over, guys, let's hear what he has to say. What we're gonna look for today is first we're gonna wash them, look at techniques of how you do that, how clean you get them. Then we're gonna blow them out, clip them, look at the ways that you shear them out, different techniques you use to accentuate positive parts, hide negative parts of your animal, and overall appearance of them. Well, the kids and the sheep are ready. It's time to start challenge number two. Let the cutting commence. And you know, if they do this right, it could look rather like a work of art. Sort of a Mona Flisa. Each contestant will be prepping a lamb for showing. They'll begin by washing them, then use the clippers to trim them. 
This one's not about speed at all. It's about accuracy and neatness. Whoever's lamb looks the best at the end will win. And they gotta work safely too. Rocky's gonna be holding them to some pretty high standards. Good luck to both of you. Ready, Ready set, set, go. Wow. You're good and soaked down, especially where there's that crud. Get up under the belly there. I wonder if you cross a pig with a sheep if you'd get pigs in a wool blanket. Good job. Ah. Nice bead of shampoo down the, uh, on the back. When you're washing your sheep, the best thing to do is start at the highest point because gravity pulls water down. So start at the head, wash down, wash down their back, and then down their body. Plus, if you can wash out as much dirt with just the hose and the soap or water before you soap them, makes it a lot easier. Good job. You can get right around this back leg here, maybe a little bit more. There we go. Looks like Joe's being a little more thorough. He took twice as long without the soap, just getting all that mm. crud out. This shampoo, even though it's purple, will make it look way more white when you're done. To translate what that sheep is bleeding, he's saying lower to the left, lower to the left. Good job. Now she's done the back, we'll work down the sides. Joe's ready to start taking some of his soap off. When you're rinsing, rinse from the top so all the soap goes down. So you don't have to re-rinse. Inside, looking pretty good. So after this, we'll have some great trips from Tractor Supply Company and the winner of our second challenge. So don't go away from Tough Grit. You know the old saying that an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure? Well, the ideal animal care plan centers on maintaining a healthy flock, so medical treatments are rarely needed and preventative care can be limited to what is essential. Reducing the need to use needles and drenches leads to flock, rancher, and a bottom line further ahead. One of the cornerstones of a healthy flock is good nutrition. If your sheep are well fed, they'll be less likely to get sick in the first place. Sheep are truly amazing creatures and can thrive off good forage alone if there is enough. Despite this, there will come times when you want to supplement their diet, such as when your ewes are lactating. If you're new to raising sheep, be wary of all around or general purpose livestock feeds. Sheep don't require as much copper as goats, cattle, and horses, and the levels found in all purpose feeds can be toxic. The assistance of a trained veterinarian is critical in creating the best plan for you and your sheep. They can advise you on what vaccinations are actually necessary. Vaccinating sheep yourself isn't difficult provided that you can round them up, and it can save you time and money. Welcome back to Tough Grit. Well, we're cutting to the chase. Who will be the sheer victor of our second challenge? Let's find out. Does that look about right? Yeah, it looks pretty good. I think we should give it some oil. Yeah. Whoa! There we go. She's gonna start up in that. Turn it down. Work her way down the back. Beautiful. Clipper blades leave marks. No matter how fine they are, they'll leave lines. Mm -hmm. Lines are like stripes on a shirt. But the stripes from the clippers, you can actually use those stripes to elongate the neck or elongate the legs. It's sort of like an optical illusion kind of thing. A lot of sheep will have calyx where it grow, the wool grows in different directions. Sure, sure. So we'll typically shear the first time on our body from the front to the back and then we soft soap them up 
blow them out again, and then we'll shear from the back forward at an angle. It gives those lines an illusion to going from low in the back to high in the front, which gives them extension and a little more angularity. Well, she doesn't like you messing with that side. Nah. All right, we're deferring to Rocky's expertise on this one. Rocky, what do you got for us? Well, I think they both did a great job. I think both lambs look like they're ready to go to any county fair and be competitive. But overall, I think Joe did the better job. He did a little better job of blending the legs and, and washing the lamb. All right, congratulations, Joe. You and your chapter of FFA have won a $500 gift card to Tractor Supply. Congratulations. Thank you. And Ann, from the first challenge today, you also won your chapter, a $500 gift card to Tractor Supply Company. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. How do you think you guys will spend it? Um, our greenhouse needs some fixing up. We'll probably spend it on that. Beautiful. Well, I think these two kids have a new fleece on life. And if you're not too sheepish, here's a way that you can be a part of the Tough Grit Rule America Challenge. To sign up, go to toughgrit.com and click on the I can do that button or look for the advertisement in Grit Magazine. Don't wait, sign up today. So now you know almost everything you need to know about herding, caring for, and fitting your sheep. If you'd like to learn more, visit toughgrit.com. I'm glad you could be with us today, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Shannon, what are you doing with those? Oh, I got a part-time job. I trim very coarse beards. A part-time job? No one's going to be foolish enough to let you trim their beard with sheep shears. <laughs> Looks like it's time for my appointment. I stand corrected. I'm Caleb Regan. And I'm Shannon Riley. And when you see us coming, you know you're in... Tough, tough Grit. grit.